Okay, hello everyone. Um, this is the finished stove. Uh, solid fuel, waste oil burning stove. Um, I just gave it a coat of paint. So it's still in its temporary position. I haven't fixed it um, through the roof yet. I wanted to see, you know, just how good it would be. And as it turns out, it's absolutely stunning. The amount of heat out of this thing um, is tremendous. You know, and for what it cost, you know, it took a bit of time to make it. Uh, not that much. And, um, and it works very good. There's no issues with it. It'll burn. Last night I had, um, I had some solid fuel in it. I had some logs and various other bits and pieces I just threw in it. And uh, I wanted to see what the output would be like, you know, to see if it could match the output of the oil. Um, I don't know, it gets pretty close. It was over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit last night on the, the side walls of the top end of that stove. So, so the burn chamber is from here up to the top and uh, that whole section, as can be seen in a previous video, was um, over a thousand degrees. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep paint on this thing at those sort of temperatures. Uh, if anybody knows uh, a paint that doesn't mind going up to about, you know, um, eight or nine hundred degrees centigrade, that'd be great. Um, currently I don't know of any. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, uh, the reason for the clock over there is that I'm going to time it. Um, you know, how long it takes to get from zero to sixty if you like. Um, so you can see, I don't know if it'll turn up, I've got a, my phone and a clock so you can kind of work it out. If you can't see the phone you'll be able to see the clock. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to light it and um, we'll see how long it takes to go from you know cold and it is cold here at the moment. It, it, there's no, um, I don't know, it can't be more than about 5 degrees centigrade. Uh, just, well there you go. So this, the stove, if you can see the laser, is you know 3 or, three or 4 degrees centigrade. And it's heading up on four o'clock in the afternoon here. So in any case, uh, I'm going <coughs> to throw the stuff in, get it started, start the stopwatch, and we'll see how long it takes. Um, this is uh, the conclusion of I, I don't know. I think this is video seven, and uh, this is it. The stove is finished. The only thing to happen to the stove now after this is I'm going to uh, permanently install it um, once I can get uh, a kit for the roof because it's uh, corrugated or. Uh, you know, steel roof. So, uh, in any case, here we go. I'm going to light the stove now. So, as in previous videos, but I didn't time it before. This is a domestic fire lighter. Okay, throw it in there, and then I'm going to throw in the drop of white spirits. So, that's just to get it going. And now I'm going to close it up and add some oil. And we'll start the stopwatch. Okay. So, I'm sure you can hear it already. It's beginning to go. And I'm just opening the valve so I get a flow. It's been 19 seconds so far, and that's what's happening there in the behind the Pyrex dish. Okay, so there's the oil coming. I'm gonna just restrict the oil down a bit. Okay, and we're at 41 seconds now. 44 seconds. So it lights straight away, there's no, there's no messing around with it afterwards, you just, you know, throw in a bit of white spirits. Uh, the side walls of the pot in here is going to get, or they're going to get um, red hot shortly. Once that happens then, that oil going in is um, vaporized and burns better. So just waiting for that reaction to, to actually happen, and uh, maybe you can see in there. So we're going a minute now, a minute and 16 seconds. 
So it's already beginning to produce heat. I don't think my paint is going to last very long on this. I'd say it's going to going to burn off. A minute 27 seconds at the moment. But it's already combust. I mean, the fire is lighting now, um, and it's not going to go out unless I shut off the oil. So we're just waiting for it to kind of build up temperature and get to kind of it. I don't know. It's kind of like a critical mass of temperature. And uh, that's degrees centigrade, as uh, I have a lot of American viewers. <laughs> I'm amazed by how many people watch this thing. But anyway, here we go. That's in Fahrenheit down at the burn chamber, and that's on the door. So it's beginning to kick off. We're going 2 minutes and 13 seconds now. Uh, as I said, this is the final video. Uh, on this particular thing. I have uh, some plans for some different types of burner units. Uh, that pot, the side walls of that pot now, after 2 minutes and 30 seconds, are getting red hot. Um, and you can see the flame. That Pyrex dish seems to be doing, doing a good job. Uh, it might be necessary to divert the flames away from it a bit, but uh, for today it will be okay. Uh, the, the previous stove I used on the, the very first video I put up, which is not that long ago, uh, was a cast iron stove, and it was great. Uh, had a bit of a crack in the back of it, and I kind of patched that up, but I want to use it somewhere else, so I wanted a um, you know, replaceable stove for the, for the shed here. And as you can see, it's you know the shed is cold, and um, when this thing gets going, it really radiates a savage amount of heat. I can see the paint beginning to uh, smoke on this, so I'm not. That's a bit worrying. So we're at. Um, there you go. That's the, the the burn chamber, secondary burn chamber. The primary is made of stainless steel, so it's a bit reflective. But and then as we go up, can you see it? I think so. So uh, that's Fahrenheit. So it just needs time now to warm up and to kind of combust a bit better. As I say, the smoke that can be seen is uh, more or less the only thing I bought for the whole project, which is uh, a can of barbecue paint. Um, it's supposed to be good up to 650 degrees C, which I think is about 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. But uh, I know I had this over 1000, so uh, it'll look good for now, but I don't see it lasting. So we're going 4 minutes and... 15 seconds so far, which is not that long, and I haven't had to do anything, you know, I just lit it. Uh, if I want to increase the burn rate, I can give it some more oil. Uh, you can see the pot, the stainless steel pot at the bottom of that, is beginning to glow. It'll get a lot brighter than that if I keep it going at this rate. Uh, handles on the door, very simple effort, and uh, the reason for this setup was really to do with when I want to use it as a solid fuel burning stove. You know, if I want to put coal or logs or uh, you know anything burnable from the shed in there, it'll go. So it's looking up. There's my oil, just to show that it's um, black waste motor oil this time around. If I had ve if I had vegetable oil, I would use that as well. Um, and you can see into the burn chamber. So depending on the amount of oil I, I send into it, um, you know it varies. If I send in a lot of oil. I can get big flames. And I, I set this up, I actually lowered the uh, the entry point for the burn chamber because I wanted the flames to actually appear behind that glass. So if I have if I want a very clean burn, um, I can make sure that the flame all happens in that burn chamber and what comes out is just heat. But uh, I want some of that flame to do a bit of work inside there and it mixes as well so uh, 
I don't know, the camera doesn't pick it up so good. So if you can see my hand, the flame is going to there, uh, which is more or less the height of the exhaust at the back. Now I've no baffles in there yet, and I do intend putting some in. Um, firstly, to, to stop the heat just going straight for the, the exhaust um, port on this, what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of hit some baffles for us and generate more heat within the stove. But um, that's really only tweaking because it, it certainly delivers a lot of heat. So let's see. Can you see the laser beam? That's we're going seven minutes now and we're up at 454 Fahrenheit and nearly a thousand Fahrenheit down in the secondary burn chamber. And the smoke isn't smoke leaking, the smoke is just <laughs> I hope it's not my ex paint. The smoke is just So we're going seven minutes now. And the heat is, is continually rising. There you go, check that out. 514. And for Europeans among us, 277. So I mean, if this project was no use, if, if it didn't work, I, I wouldn't be you know, putting videos up on YouTube, I just scrap it. It would go in a skip somewhere and that would be the end of it. But, um, you know, the way it works, absolutely fantastic. It lights very easy. We're going eight minutes now. And uh, that's 650 degrees or 1000 degree paint um, smoking. And can we see that? I think so. We're up at um, 590, 605, so you can see it rising. If I could keep it steady, you would, anyway. Okay, so <coughs> it is rising. And it's just, uh, but the, the smoke fumes off this, um, Paint, yeah, not so good. Hopefully it stays black and it's just the paint curing. Or is that just me being optimistic? So there's the, uh, there's the countdown timer. We're going nine minutes and 22 seconds. And uh, this is unedited, like this is one take. And you can see it, it's just, it's going great. As I keep saying in, in uh, you know, on, on the other videos and stuff, there isn't anything more complicated in this than the bucket. You know, a bit of pipe, and it's just gravity fed into that burn chamber. Um, and that's it, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing else can go wrong. I, I would imagine if there was water in the mix, it might make um, for some big problems. But other than that, if you're sure of your oil and you don't have any kind of, um, chunky bits in it and it's tolerant of that as well you know if they go down by the valve they'll burn um, so I don't know what else to say like it's going 10 minutes um, I might just overdrive this a bit there's our temperature there let's check it out it's still smoking Again, that's paint, so that's Fahrenheit after 10 minutes. Now, the garage, the shed door is open, so I've cold air blowing in on that, trying to cool it down and stuff. Um. I don't want to get that too close to the, um, to the flue, or it might melt the bottom rubber on that door on me. There we go. <laughs> I used some aluminium paint on the uh, the handles just to kind of pretty it up, <laughs> and uh, it's not going to stay there. It's it's melting off it. 
I suppose it's a great problem to have because um, if it wasn't working, I wouldn't want it. Again, let's check out. I can feel the heat in here now. We're up at 800 degrees and rising. And that's um, 11 minutes 46 seconds now. As you can see, nice clean burn. Nice cherry red on the, uh, you know, the burn chamber. Primary and secondary. Um, plenty of heat. And to follow it and have a look. No smoke. Okay, all I'm seeing is a heat haze. So I ran out of paint for the back of it. That was with one can, so anyway, maybe I'll buy more, but the um, back of it's going to be against the wall, so maybe not, I don't know. But as you can see, lovely clean burn. Uh, you've already seen the temperatures and uh, you know you certainly wouldn't be cold there's nothing complicated about it you know if you're fit to drill a few holes uh, in a, a pattern around you know a six inch pipe and if you're able to drill a 30 millimeter hole in a, a brake disc and you know there are other configurations that work um, and I would I would try them but um there's no need for me anyway because this one works absolutely straight out of the box. You know, one 30 millimeter hole, a couple of 10 millimeters or 12 millimeter holes at the back. I think one is 10 and one is 12 at the back of that. Um, and on previous videos, you'll see that. And then just a simple propane tank, Pyrex dish out of your kitchen, or cheap down in the local store. And um, I used some fire cement. Uh, in a previous video, I said it was a uh, high temperature silicone. I only realized it's actually a high temperature um, fire cement instead, it, um, but it's doing it, its job. That's the second Pyrex dish because the first one I broke it, or not I broke it, but I didn't allow enough expansion um, maybe and it was okay for hours afterwards and the next morning it was in a hoop or you know, it died and it uh, was on the floor. So as you can see, all the uh, the flame is happening in the burn chamber, and that's uh, where you'll get your cleanest burn. And if I up the, the fuel in it, the flow rate's increased now. Half inch gate valve may not be the best, and, and you should certainly sieve your oil before putting it in. And I didn't. So I'm getting kind of lumps coming down the line, and uh, but I just open the valve and it goes in. And, uh, so you can see I've, I've opened the valve up a little bit, and you can see the flame come up a bit higher than the blast tube into the uh, into the, the I don't know the heat chamber of the uh, the stove. Let's have a look and see what sort of smoke we're getting. Nothing. So there you go. Well, thanks for all the comments and all the views, and um, I've had a blast doing it. I need something for heat for out here anyway. And uh, as the first video with the, uh, the, the cast iron stove was so successful, I couldn't believe it. I thought, okay, as I'm gonna make one of these things anyway, I'll, I'll record it. So that's it, and I did. As I say, this is video seven. If um, if there's enough hits on this, you know, if people are interested enough on this, I'll um, I'll do something uh, something else. I have I have several ideas that I, I want to try out. There you go. Uh, I have had you know people inquiring as to the safety of this thing. Um, 
you know, an open fireplace, um, you know, in a house where you just light a fire, uh, you know, it has the potential for something to fall out of it and land on a, a rug or something in front of the fire and, and burn a house down. I mean, fire, you know, depending on where you put it, you know, if it's down the end of your garden, it's it's a uh, it's safe. But uh, as far as I can see with this, I mean, there are opportunities for something to go wrong, but you'd want to be very careless for that to happen. Uh, this, to me, is reliable. Uh, it's gravity-fed. Power failure won't affect it. In fact, if you're sitting in the cold somewhere and um, you know you had some waste oil and you, you had one of these things, it doesn't require anything other than more waste oil. So um, you know, gravity-fed couldn't be easier. Possible to put a boiler in this thing, which I'm going to. That's one of the, the, the plans for the next video, maybe, and uh, and produce hot water. Uh, hot water for radiators. I have radiators in my own house, and uh, and it could heat those easily. Um, I also have underfloor heating, and uh, it would do a superb job on that. So, anyway, that's down the road sometime. But you can see it. That's the burn. Flames are just a bit higher than that that uh, that portal. That's the smoke. Nothing. And there's nothing else to show you, really. Okay, everyone, that's it for me for now. Thanks very much for uh, all the comments and the su subscribers and all of that. I, you know, I'm amazed that people are interested in, in you know, something I knocked up. But in any case, thanks very much, and uh, maybe see you again on the next video. Bye.